Hi, welcome to Pike Creek Farm. I am canning pickles again today. I got this crooked. Let me try and straighten it so. Uh, and I am using Mrs. Wages bread and butter pickle mix. I'm not sure if any of you have ever used any of her mixes. I use her salsa, I use her dill pickles, and I use her bread and butter. I do have my mom's bread and butter recipe and I have the ball books. My mom used to slice them thin and layer them with ice and it was like this huge project. This is quick and easy and everyone loves them. They taste great. So I'm going to make these pickles today. It says it makes seven quarts. I make mine in pints, so I should have about 15, 14 pints. So that would be two canners full. And what you have to do with this is um, you add six and a half cups of distilled by percent acidity vinegar, seven cups of sugar, and this pouch into a pan and put it on to heat. I have cucumbers already sliced up. I might have to slice, I have two bowls here. I might have to slice some more. And we will get going on processing these. First, we will make the brine. I do already have my canner with water in it heating up because, and I have my jars jars are in the dishwasher. They've cycled through and they're staying hot in there. I have my lids and my rings. So let's get going. Let's make some bread and butter pickles. I added the mix into the pan and now I am doing the sugar. That was the last cup. I thought I was recording and I must have double hit. Now we're going to add vinegar. I'm going to use apple cider vinegar. You can use apple cider or you can use white vinegar. Just make sure it's 5% acidity. And it takes six and three quarter cup. So I'm going to put this on the stove. I will stir it up. And I will bring you back when this is heated up to boiling and the sugar is all dissolved. So here we go on the stove. I'll bring you back. I'm going to start filling the jars. I don't put pickle crisp like I do my other pickles in the bread and butters. Um, it doesn't mention doing it like it does on the dill pickles and we've always been happy with how they turn out. I think you could if you wanted to but it's just something that we've never done. So it's just a matter of I squashed my cucumbers, I cut the ends off, and then I sliced them on the thin side. And I'm just packing them into the jars now. Mrs. Wages are super easy. She does all the measuring for you of the spices and everything. And everything is safe and up to food safety standards and sometimes it's hard to go to stores and find mustard seed when you need it for canning season and this has everything in it for you. Pickles are always a little bit like Tetris or jigsaw puzzle to get the most in a space that you can.
my brine is still heating up. I will add the brine to these jars up to the half inch, debubble them, and then put the lids on. You can make these in quart jars too. Might be easier to fit them in the slices in a quart jar. But with just two of us in the house, and my you know my daughter is single, and my son there's two there. Well, the baby now, so it's three, but she doesn't eat much food yet. The pints work out well. I do quarts for dill pickles because they're bigger. Okay, I'm going to grab some more jars. More jars that I'm going to fill up. I have a towel down here and if I lightly tap locked there. If I lightly tap, it helps to settle down the pickle slices. That's the thick one. <laughs> So I'm going to keep filling up the jars. I'll bring you back when the brine is ready. I can hear it starting to make some noise over there, so it's getting close. I'm going to keep stirring the brine for the sugar to dissolve. Everything dissolved in the brine, so we will fill the jars now. You need half inch headspace. That one has too much. <laughs> this is a stickier brine because of all the sugar in it. Now we wipe the rim. The lid on. The ring just till it stops. And into the canner that has water heating up in it. I made a mistake on that one. I did not debubble, so I need to pull that one back out. Here's my debubbler. It's important to do this with pickles because there's lots of pockets where you could have air, and that doesn't let the heat disperse correctly. So now I need to weave. Re wipe the lid, put the ring on, put it back in. Too much in that one, too. There we go. You can see, I don't know if you can see, but like there's celery seed, it looks like, and there is mustard seed. So I think they're a great value because all those ingredients are already in there, all those spices. Wipe the rim. And 
to the canner. I am going to keep filling the jars and debubbling and wiping the rim with the warm cloth, wet cloth, and put the lids on and I'll bring it back when the canner is full. Eight jars in the canner, I turn the heat up and we wait for it to come to a boil and then it has to um, set the timer for 10 minutes. It needs to come to a full boil. We're at the full boil, so the timer set on 10 minutes. Just took out the first canner, eight pints of the bread and butter pickles. They do float some, but they settle, but you can tell which ones I had packed tighter than other ones. Um, some jars are packed tighter, but they do settle down after everything cools. Here is a jar that we have been working on that I made August 14th last year. My dad was here and helped me. So there's like four pickles left. So I'm gonna take out one to show you what they look like. Here's some of the pickles. Last few from that jar. I'm not sure if you can hear this, but there is a crunch. They are very good. I love them on sandwiches. The pulled pork sandwiches are great, but bread and butter pickles. Thank you for stopping by Pike Creek Farm. Like this video to see more canning videos and subscribe to my channel and you'll see more. Thank you very much.